Hi folks, we're going to take a look at an example of uh, simplifying polynomial expressions. Okay, so we have this uh, uh, big polynomial expression uh, with lots of operations going on and we're going to see if we can use our rules to whittle this down to a much uh, more reasonable um, polynomial. Okay, so here we've got polynomials inside our brackets. Okay, and since these all represent numbers, we have to think about following the rules of bed mass. So I look here and I see that this uh, bracket here and the second and the third are already simplified. We can't simplify these any further because there's no like terms within the brackets. Okay, so we've done our due diligence, uh, due diligence there. Okay, none of these monomials or polynomials have exponents on them. Okay. So there's no squared or cubed here or any squared or cubed around the minus 3x. So there's no uh, exponents we have to take care of. So now we're left with multiplications and uh, additions and subtractions. Okay. So as I said, we have to follow the rules of bed mass. So I have to take care of the multiplications first. Okay. So remember here when there's no symbol between, uh, there's no operation between two symbols, we assume it's multiplication. So we have a multiplication here, multiplication there, and... Well, we have a multiplication here. Problem is there's no number or variable in front of the bracket. Of course, you have to remember that we assume that there's a hidden one there that we don't bother writing down. So for now, I'll add it in just to remind myself that I've got a negative one in front of that bracket. Okay, so my first step is to perform all these multiplications and then we save the additions and subtractions for later on. So how do we multiply a monomial by a polynomial? Well, we use the distributive property, okay? So this says that I'm multiplying everything inside the bracket by negative 3x. So as I did before with uh, an earlier operation, I can use these arrows to represent distributing this number, okay, to each of the terms, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So first I have negative 3 times x squared. So coefficient here is 1, so negative 3 times 1, still negative 3. Okay, and then x to the 1 times x squared, we add the exponents x cubed. Okay, let's go to the next one. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives us positive 6. x times x, x squared. Now let's do the last one. Negative 3 times positive 5, negative 15. And x, well, there's no other x, so it doesn't change. It stays the same. Okay. Now we do the second multiplication, which, again, is a number times a polynomial. So I use, again, the distributive property. Now, at this point here, I just want to remind everyone of what sign we're always using when we're considering um, a term. We always use a sign that comes to the left of the number or the variable. Okay, so here we've got positive 2 times all of these terms. So positive 2 times x squared gives us plus 2x squared. Positive 2 times positive 4 is plus 8. And of course we have the x. And then lastly, positive 2 times negative 1 gives us minus 2. Okay, now here we had the subtraction, but remember we've got a negative 1 in front of this bracket. So as before, we have to distribute the negative one to every term in the bracket, okay? Now, as you get more confident, you realize, well, wait a minute, multiplying something by negative one just changes its sign. So we're gonna see that that's gonna be effect here. They're gonna be the effect. Negative one times positive three, well, it just gives me negative three, and of course, x squared, okay? Negative one times positive three, again, negative three, and x, and now negative one times negative two, just gives me positive 2. Okay, And this is our goal when simplifying polynomials. We'd like to get to the point where once we've taken care of any simplification of brackets, any exponents, any multiplications, I should be just left with a whole series of additions and subtractions. Okay, But the only things we're allowed to add and subtract are what we call like terms. And remember that a like term not only has to have the same variable, the variables also have the same have to have the same exponent. Okay, so let me go from left to right here. And I here I've got my negative 3x cubed. But as I look throughout all my other terms, there's no other term that has an x cubed.
Okay, so this does not change. Can't simplify that with anything. Okay, let's go now to the next 6x squared. Now remember what I said, when you're considering the sign, you always look at the sign that comes before the number. Okay, so I'm actually going to consider this, it's positive 6x squared. And now let's look for any other x squared terms. Here, uh, we've got a plus 2x squared. So you see that I'm always including the sign that comes before it. And then it looks like here I've got a minus 3x squared. So now I can simplify these three terms together. 6x squared plus 2x squared gives me 8x squared. And then minus 3x squared, 8 minus 3 is 5. And since it's positive 5, it becomes plus 5x squared. Okay. Now I go to the next one and I see I have a minus 15x. Okay, so we look for the other terms that just have x's. So here we have a plus 8x, and here we have a minus 3x. Okay, so let's add and subtract from left to right. I've got negative 15 plus 8. Okay, that gives me negative 7. And then negative 7 minus 3 gives me negative 10. So that becomes minus 10x. So again, negative 15 plus 8, negative 7 negative 7 minus 3, negative 10. Okay, and lastly we have our uh, constant terms. So here it looks I've got a minus 2 and the only other constant term I have here is the plus 2. Okay, so we do minus 2 plus 2. Well hey, that's just equal to 0. Okay, now technically we could write plus 0, but we know that adding 0 doesn't change anything. So we eliminate this and the expectation is that you wouldn't be writing it down. So this would be your final answer. Okay. So just to recap, when you're simplifying these more complex polynomials, step one is look at anything in brackets. Can it be simplified? If yes, do so. If not, move on. Look for any powers of these monomials or polynomials, but just to give you a heads up, we won't be looking at uh, powers of polynomials with more than one term, but there's no, in this case here, there was no powers of our uh, monomials. So move on now to the multiplications. Here we had a multiplication here, there, and there. We took care of that by using our distributive property. And then once you've done that, you're left with simplifying all the additions and subtractions by adding and subtracting only like terms.